We are Steve and Jill. Together, we've been buying and reselling land since the 90s. Our data-centric approach leaves our buyers asking, how can you sell it so cheap? Here on the Land Academy Show, we answer that and more. Steve and Jill here. Hi. Welcome to the Land Academy Show, entertaining land investment talk. I'm Stephen Jack Butella. And I'm Jill DeWitt, broadcasting from sunny Southern California. Today, Jill and I talk about how to pull a title report in Title Pro 24-7. Whoa. <laughs> Let me stop you right there. Let me give you the real title. The real title is going to be Title Report Worthy Due Diligence. Or what's a title report? We're trying to dispel some things here and make sure everybody's doing this right. So we're gonna. I have a lot I'm going to cover here. This is going to be a good show. Every week we uh, ask our customer service people to give us hot topics. What should we talk about? What What are people asking about? And this was this was a, an actual direct quote. How do How do you pull a title report in Title Pro 24 seven? Multiple people asked. I'm not sure why. We probably talked about it. And property so, report. First of all, that's not actually like the not. Yeah. Exactly. That's, That's not the right say. question. Property report. <laughs> okay. Before we get into it, let's take a question posted by one of our members on the landinvestors.com online community. It's free. Shiria, Shiria, I'm going to say, I'm going to hope I'm saying that's right, asks, who do you use to do an ex- inexpensive title search? I recently used easytitlesearch.com and it was $55. The thing is, it's my first time ever doing it, so I don't know if it's good or not. That's the thing. This is perfect for this. I have a lot to say here. How are you guys doing title search and how much are you paying? It seems like most title companies charge between $150 to $250 to do them, which doesn't make sense if you're just doing some investigation. So we're going to talk a lot about this in the show, but let me answer this question here first real quick. One of the things that I do in my due diligence is I go back and I search a chain of title. And between our three products- What's the chain of title? Um, Thank you for asking. (laughs) The chain of title is to make sure the guy before this property, the deed was done correctly, everything lines up, the legal description, you check all that. The deed before that, I want to make sure he bought it, he sold it. Yep, that's the buyer, that's the seller, grantor, grantee. Make sure that's all correct. The legal description's right, nothing funny going on. No, the dates line up, great. Go to the guy before that. And the guy, and so on. That's a chain of title. I want to make sure that when you, when that guy sold it to you, and you sold it to me, and I'm sold it to him, it was all looks correct, and there are no issues. The legal description wasn't off. APM wasn't off. Um, a company wasn't misspelled. Something or, or something left out or missing document. You know that would be a cloud on that. But we don't need to get into that right now. So that's a chain of title, just to give you the the gist. Like going back and researching the pink slip on your car. Kind of thing. Was it stolen in the middle there and somebody missed it? Okay. Now, then the question is, um, to do this, so how I do, how do I check the chain of title? I do is this. this the topic? I, well, I'm going to go into this in just a minute. First, I want to answer this question because it's very important because I've been in this exact situation. I've We have all the tools. Land Academy members have all the tools to do this ourselves, to do this cursory overview and just and really do a good job. I shouldn't say cursory overview. Do a good job. Just confirming the titles between the three products, between Data Tree and Title Pro and uh, RealQuest Pro, all those three that we offer, I can go back and pull vesting deeds and deeds before that. I can see uh, mortgages that are recorded, all kinds of recorded documents, and really do a lot by myself. I have had times in in uh, my career where, gosh darn it, I've had a company, and it was so funny because I remember the last time I did this was less than a year ago. I couldn't find anything. There was one property. I'm like, why does nobody have anything on this property? I couldn't find a single recorded deed, anything anywhere, right? So I did what Shreya did. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to pull up one of these companies and see how much they charge, like just like this. I'm going to pay them and see what they come back with. And what do you think happened? Nothing. Exactly. Because they have that data set. Because so, everybody's back, working from the same data set. Exactly. They came back and said, sorry, can't do it. Here's your refund. I'm like, all right. Proved my point. If I can't find it, they can't find it. So my other point is, you Land Academy and House Academy members, you guys have most of the stuff at your fingertips. You may not realize it. And I'm going to talk about that in the meat of the show. <laughs> <laughs> Today's topic, how to pull a title report in Title Pro 24-7. This is the meat of the show. As I was saying, this is kind of my show today. 
So you can just kind of take a break. I'm digging it. Okay, good. So the real title of the show is you're not pulling a title report in any of these products. That's not what you're doing. A title report is a culmination of things that a title company pulls and they put it all together in a pretty package, a couple pages and call it a title report. You have the ability to do a lot of this on your own. And so that's why I'm really calling this show title report worthy due diligence. I don't want to mislabel it or let me think that I can go on Agent Pro 24 seven, pull a title report. You can't, you can pull a property report. You can pull all the vesting deeds. You can pull, um, lien reports. You can do all those things. Packaging it up and calling it a title report is a made up product that title companies do and they sell it to you doing all the same stuff. That's the reality. Well said. And they're not perfect, by the way. So there are things, even though they say we're selling you this insurance, this and this and this, when you really go read it, they only insure against the things that they find. They don't insure against the things that they don't find. And if you're in this business long enough, like we have been, I have found things that they missed and I get to pay for it. They don't cover it. Their title insurance meant nothing. It's just, it's just kind of a thing. So what I want you to think about is what are you doing here? I, I want you to think about the type of deals that you're doing. And I want you to know what you need to dig for and what you don't need to dig for because that's what's important. Are you doing a self-close or are you closing through a title company? We nowadays, because of the size of the transactions that we're doing, the money that's involved and the type of property that are going to be built upon usually, they, all the companies out there, all the banks out there, the, my buyer's probably taking out a loan. They want a quote unquote title insurance. They want this special policy with title insurance coming from a title company. Fine. We can hand them that. So that's the kind of deals that we're doing in the past or for you starting out, you might be buying things for a thousand dollars. Does it make sense for you to go to get a $1,500 policy on this? It might not. It depends on the circumstances, of course, uh, on what's going to happen at the end of the property, but sometimes you're going to self close. So maybe it's just like a, a pretty little, uh, a thousand dollar property you're going to sell for three thousand dollars that someone's just going to picnic and spend the weekends there and put up a tent now and then they're not going to need title insurance for that but i do want you to do your homework and, and know that you're buying something you know you're buying it right and you've checked all the boxes so here's what we here's what i usually do with my due diligence this is what you want me to keep going you want to, oh yeah okay <laughs> all right i mean i can simplify some of this if you want no i don't want you yeah, to that's what i figured <laughs> This is going to be good. And I, I have a feeling my team's going to reuse this show uh, a lot. Okay, good. And I, I want you to re hopefully bookmark, save the show, because this is going to help you. What you need to do is, this is I should, could do, do a webinar on this too, and I might. So anyway, so what I want you to think about is, first thing you should do is decide if um, you want to confirm the basics. That's the thing. Whether you're going to do a title close or self-close. When you're staring at a property and deciding and doing your, this is your title report worthy due diligence, you're going to use parcel fact or neighbor scoop. And you're going to confirm the basics like ownership, access, slope, uh, zoning. Maybe look at how much they paid for the property. There's a couple, maybe see what the annual taxes are. Kind of see, you know, peek around a little bit. That's what you're going to do on your initial um, due diligence phase two. And this is for both, whether you're doing a self close or a title close this is what I do also. Cause I don't want to open an escrow and find out there's something wrong with the property. I'm not going to go do it afterwards. I need to know ahead of time before I pull the trigger. Second thing too, before I pull the trigger, while I'm a self close or call a title agent, I'm going to call the, call the County if I need to, or just do whatever I have to, I can do it online. I want to confirm taxes I want to turn, confirm the usage of the property if I make sure it's going to do what I think it's going to do um, and get all my billability if it's appropriate for that. Get those questions answered. That's the second step. Now, the third step, I feel good about all that. If I'm going through escrow, heck, now I'm done. Mic drop. I open escrow. They do the rest. So they want to, they're going to dig deeper. They're going to pull, you know, um, lean reports. They're going to pull all that stuff. That's what I'm paying them for. I'm happy to do that. If I uncover any of that, if I want to, you know, and share it with them, I will.
but that's it. And then at the end of the title close, you know, I bought the property. Now for me, self-close. Okay, now I've done all the steps one and steps two. I'm going to step three for me is I'm going to put on my title agent hat and I'm going to go into Title Pro 24-7 and I'm going to pull lien reports and I'm going to go back and check the chain of title. I want to make sure and I want to go back. Most title companies, I need to confirm these numbers, but on all of my experience still, it holds 30 years, maybe more, 30, 40 years is usually as far back as they're going to go. Most title companies are not going to call you and say, hold on, Jill, I, um, my guy needs another week because we're only at 1910 and we need to see if we can find a deed before 1910. They're not going to do that kind of thing. Uh, so that's what I want you to do. And you have all of that at your fingertips. Once you, and you, like I was saying before in the question, you can see, and I want you to be with a fine tooth comb with it. Make sure grantor grantee is exact. Um, I want you to make sure the legal description is exact. You might find things in there. I hate to bring up the word, but you might find um, exclusions as far as um, <coughs> access, uh, easements and things. Make sure you're aware of this stuff. Look for that stuff in there so you know you know what you're buying. Because sometimes stuff gets dropped when you go from deed to deed. I want to make sure that you know. And I'm trying to think if there's anything else. Oh, and then the lead reports, you can do that. And again, you, you have this at your fingertips. And at the end, you buy it. Is that two through two, yeah, that's a, a fantastic presentation, impromptu presentation, Jill. Seriously, you. <laughs> you know the two, two or three things that really matter when you're buying a piece of real estate, and it might be a skyscraper or it might be a, a small piece of property, uh, and Jill just nailed it. Number one is the person or the entity that you're buying it from, the person that you're talking to on the phone. So in the case of a skyscraper, it's going to be XYZ company. And, you know, you need to look at or make sure when you're in negotiations of buying this thing or selling it. Yeah, buying it, really, that you're when you're not wasting a lot of time because so and you can do very easy checks like, OK, so you're talking to the person on the phone, you're going to buy the property. It's owned by XYZ LLC. Does that make sense to you? Yes, it does. That's our company. Our CEO will sign it when we're done. It's the same thing down right down to a tiny little property where the problem comes in with that is that, in, and this is probably 95% of it for me, because I would love for you to correct me if I'm wrong here. Okay. The vast majority of, of the problems happen with, uh, with chain of title because someone dies who owns a property and their heirs or somebody else who's getting the mail thinks that they own it. Correct. Because the, it's in the will. So they're staring at a will saying, my mom gave me everything. It says it right here and it's still in her name, but I own it. And, the, and that's just not the case. Correct. And so a title, getting title insurance, will, they're, they're going to smoke that out and they're going to say, hey, you can't close this deal unless you do this, 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 and this. And we'll do it for you in some cases. In some cases, they can't. Or it's cost prohibitive. That's what matters here. And then the, big, the second biggest issue is lien. So think of a house. You would never want to buy a house. Uh, you know, you're buying a house from a couple who have a mortgage and you're buying, paying $200,000 for it. They have a hundred and fifty thousand dollar mortgage on the house. You would never want to buy that house for two hundred grand and assume and 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 go get a mortgage to buy it and then have to pay their mortgage too. That's what a lien report says. A lien report says, "Hey, Bank of America's got a mortgage on this thing for these people, so it, that mortgage needs to be extinguished as part of the purchase price." So yeah, my bank's going to give escrow two hundred thousand. They're going to give one hundred and fifty thousand to uh, the former owners. Uh, mortgage company that extinguishes that lien. Um, we're checking for liens, checking for liens. There's no other liens at all. There's no second position mortgage. They've been paying their water bill. Those are the. That's like 99 percent of, of all of what real title really does. Mm -hmm. So this whole notion of hey, how do I go get a title report? What the, when someone says that, how do I go get a title report in twenty four seven or wherever? What they're really saying in the question, the person who asked the question, what they're really saying is. How do I get comfortable with the fact that I can buy this property and there's not going to be issues with former owners coming back and saying, hey, I thought that was my property, Correct. which, by the way, we've done 16,000 deals almost never happens. Right. Uh, and I, actually, I can say. On on one hand, some issues have come come up. And, and They've been able to solve them. You yes, solve always, them. always. So, yeah. you know, it's not something you really need to worry about, but we do need to 
the whole point of this for me is to dispel this. How do I pull a title report? Well, you don't. Right. You just get, you collect information and, and write it down and collect a little file and say, this looks good. This looks good. Looks right. pretty good to me. I'm going to buy it. You know, I'm going to schedule this though. This first quarter, I'll tell you right now, Land Academy people, um, or, or anybody listening, by the way, you don't have to be a member to get in on this stuff. Uh, I'm going to have a, this first quarter, I'm going to have a sales webinar. I'm thinking maybe the second quarter, I think I'm going to do a tile report worthy due diligence. And when I do these webinars, I'll do screenshots and show you how I can get in and show you what I'm looking at, what I'm looking for. I think everybody would love that. So let us know, by the way, <laughs> that'd be great. Happy you could join us today. Every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, you can find us right here on the Land Academy Show. Tuesdays and Thursdays, please listen because all this stuff relates to you too over on the House Academy Show. <laughs> <laughs> Tomorrow, uh, the episode on the House Academy Show is called Wholesaling a House with Confidence. You are not alone in your real estate ambition. It does. I want everybody to make sure everybody knows you should be listening five days a week because some of our topics, they cross over into both. And you can just put on... You know, you can say, all right, how does this apply to land? Duh, yeah. drop $100,000 or something. Or, you know, or depending on the deals you're doing, add $100,000. You know, the, the <laughs> truth is more and more and more in our in the groups that we have, the membership groups and all, and everybody that we do deals with, they're going through title. Um, we're, for however, I'm not sure why, we're all doing less small deals and better larger deals where their margins are bigger. So we just go through title and, and not a lot of this applies. But... It's kind of like learning to draft a stick shift. You need to know the basics. This is your career. Uh, you want to be able to hold a conversation about it and understand what the chain of title is and, and have a working knowledge of these phrases and terms. Uh, and so that's what this is really about. It's not about, oh my gosh, man, I got to make sure that this property, the chain of title back to the homestead is okay. And if there's no liens on it, what is this lien? There was a lien on night. It's not that. Right. <laughs> exactly. Don't hurt your head. It's okay. The Land Academy show remains commercial free for you, our loyal listener. So wherever you're watching, wherever you're listening, please subscribe and rate us there. We're Stephen Jill. Information and inspiration to buy undervalued property.